Hey, lady. How are you? Hey, Kathy. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. It's Wednesday night. It's fabulous. I know. It's already Wednesday again. Kind of crazy, it's, right? Yeah, it is. It seems like yesterday we were just doing last month. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. It really does. Yeah, but then in a way, it seems like 10 years ago since we did this, because I've been doing so, I've been so busy. And yeah. you've been busy. Been I busy. have been. Yeah, hey, and I'm Judy. sure everybody. Yep. Hey, Judy. People are starting to come in. Yay. Awesome. And then I'm sure everybody else is just as busy. So everybody has their level of busy. Everybody's busy. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. But okay. Cool beans. You got a good purple color shirt on. Good for the theme, friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Denise. How are you? Hi. Where are Hi. you from, Denise and Judy? Where are you guys from? Would love to hear where you guys are from. From. So, what are we going to talk about tonight, Miss Angela? I think we're talking about how to make getting started on quilting easier. Like how to okay. actually start quilting a quilt. Or how to decide okay. what to put in it, right? Okay. All right, Judy's from Georgia, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Down south where it's warmer. Oh and wait. Kim you're warmer, Miss Angela. <laughs> yeah, I'm warm. uh, Texas and I are about the same. Atlanta's about the same too. Hello. Uh, then we have Oklahoma. So yeah, yeah. we're all warmer. We just drove through Sorry. Oklahoma. <laughs> it was really weird. Can I just tell you? It was really weird driving through Oklahoma after Toby Keith has died. Because there's signs all over about Toby Keith, right? And we drove yeah. through his hometown. So hmm, it's kind of sad. It was just, I mean, it was all internal in my brain. I didn't like, but it was still kind of interesting. It is sad. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, I love the red clay. My grandson went with us, right? So Liam is with us and we stopped at the gas station and there's red footprints and he's like, what is that? <laughs> so, okay. all right. You okay? So I'm trying to figure out why we lost Facebook for some reason. Oh, it's fine. We'll just keep on going. I'm just going to keep on going. It'll be okay. So why don't you start, Miss Angela, with where, what would you say, where is your first start? Okay. So a lot of times when you start a quilt, it's hard to decide what you're going to quilt on that quilt, right? Um, deciding what designs you want to put on, if you want to custom quilt it, if you want to pantograph quilt it, what you want to do to that quilt, mm -hmm. right? So there's some tricks that professional long armors use to help them decide what they're going to quilt on a quilt because we don't have a lot of time to wait in between quilts. So one of them is that a lot of us actually have our customers choose. Okay, Facebook's back. Um, a lot of us have um, have our customers choose like our pantographs and, mm -hmm. and things like that so that we don't have to make those choices, right? But when you're first starting out, um, there's some tricks that you can do that can help you make those decisions up front. Okay. One of which is if, if you think you're going to be doing just edge to edge quilting, right. Mm -hmm. You can choose like 10 pantographs. I wouldn't get crazy with pantographs when I'm first buying pantographs. Um, but buy 10 solid pantographs that have different motifs to them, like get one that has flowers, one that's feathers, right. Different feels to those pantographs, right. So that when you have a very traditional quilt, you can put feathers on it, or you can put it all over meander on it. Right. When you have something that's very, very modern, you're probably not going to use feathers on it. You could, mm -hmm. but most modern cultures aren't feather crazy, right? So you might want to have something that has geometric lines or swirls on it, right? right. To do modern quilts. So, but really, if you look at like a, a basic 10 pantograph set, right, that you're going to start out with, that's going to give you those small baby steps on what you're going to choose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, so, and, and that's how I started with pantographs is I had a friend who was a pantograph quilter. She sat down with me and she helped me pick out 10 pantographs that I bought um, digital copies of because I, I didn't do this as paper pantographs. That was never my thing. Right. Um, and it gave me 
some that weren't already in the program that I could use and that I like. Some of the just basic, like a stipple is in the program already, right? Um, there's some really good, if you have Quilt Path uh, and you go under your the free bonus design um, folder, uh, Jessica has some really good like squirrels yes. that are great for modern quilts, right? That are mm -hmm. in the program. So you don't have to worry about that. But I would pick out the ones that I think look modern, right? The mm -hmm. ones that look traditional, the ones that look like they would be great on a baby or a kid's quilt, right? And keep a list of them, a short list. So that when I couldn't figure out what I wanted to quilt, I'd have something to look at to get me going, right? So the whole idea behind this is to give yourself some cheat steps or some baby steps to get you going. Right. Don't buy 30,000 pantographs. There's already a lot that's in there. But pick out and look and discern and pick out which ones you like kind of the best. And let, only let your customers pick from those 10. They Just do not need to know. Right. They do not need to know you have X amount of, you know, thousands or 500 or 700, whatever your machine comes with on your system. They don't need to know that. It's overwhelming to your customers. So I have a huge book of pantographs that I work with my customers on. Mm -hmm. That being said, I'll sit there and talk to my customers and go, okay, so what do you see this quilt being used for? Um, you know, somebody's graduated from college, girl or boy, right? Uh, what's their major, right? Trying to see what kind of ideas I can come up with for that quilt. And then I say, have you thought about these three pantographs, right? And, and show them like three Mm -hmm. You know, generic edge to edge pantographs, or it could be, let's say that they are graduating from NC State. It may be things that have wolves on them, or because they're the wolf pack, right? So I try to come up with ideas for them to kick them off. Otherwise, looking at a book that has 3,000 pantographs on it will stop someone cold. Like mm -hmm. they don't know what they want on that quilt, and it could take them hours to make that decision. And I, I don't right. have hours. Right. right. Don't have hours while the customer, or, right. If you're quilting for others, or if you're quilting yeah. for yourself, you could debate in your head forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you first start quilting, we talk about dancing with your machine and it's not, I have music on and I'm having fun. It's more, I walk up to it. I can't decide what I'm going to quilt and I step back and then I walk back up to it. I can't decide what I'm going to quilt and I step back. Right. So I'm dancing mm -hmm. with it, but the machine's not moving. Right. We want you to get your machines moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what we're, that was kind of our idea of what we were going to talk about is different ways to get you to get those machines actually moving. The machines like it best when they are moving. And like, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. So how do you do it, Kathy? Well, <clears throat> When I first started, um, I did have my core, my, my book has definitely grown and, um, every, and it seems like also, um, it's a process too, when we hire new people and that are helping an intake of a quilt, they need to get to know the lay of the book. They need to get to know the lay of how to ask customers who need to be guided. Right. So simple, like you said, simple, modern, traditional swirls versus feathers, that kind of stuff, right? Um, I also like to read reviews from pantographs as well, because I think those are very important, like stitched out easily or things to think about is if you are working for um, other people or you're doing a lot of charity quilts, I would put this in the same category and you want to get things that are nice but get done at a quicker pace that I don't have any back stitching on it. I like the, the where the needle, no back stitching, right? Right. So I, I have a feather or not a feather, but a leaf pantograph that I love. It's by Tracy. So it's, you know, um, it's called Pergola and it's available on um, Urban Elements. And I love the pantograph. I love how it quilts out. I love the density it quilts out at. Mm -hmm. but I will say it takes forever. So even though I love it, it's one that I don't necessarily point out to customers a lot. <laughs> right. Right. Because it, it just takes a long time. It doesn't actually backstitch. It echoes itself. Okay. Um, so all the little swirls have these really fine echoes that go with them. So every time you quilt a line, it's quilt, quilting it twice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's things that you start looking at after, after a while and going, 
okay, if I can quilt this one, it's, I do quilt that one at like 16 or 17 inches. I quilt it huge and it looks fabulous, right? Mm -hmm. um, it gives you kind of a medium density, even being that big. Um, but it's not one that I would quilt like at even under like 10 inches. It would be too small. It would take too long. Right. So, well, right? And, yeah. And that goes to, too, for paper pantographs. Because oh, I have a yeah. lot of people with paper pantographs. I am not going to pick out for my customers that echoing or really tiny swirls that go back and forth on each other. I try to get the simple one-liners, as I call them. One-liners. There's no yeah. the one-liners through. And even, even the lined ones oh. are hard as on a paper pantograph to make sure it looks smooth. Mm -hmm. Trace with your finger and make sure you can get a path because there are people that can backtrack when they're doing paper pantographs. I would never have thought when I first started doing this that paper pantographs would have backtracking on them mm -hmm. right? because you can't see what you're doing. You're on the back of the machine. And yet I have seen paper pantographs that you had to backtrack on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying don't buy them, but wait until you're really good to buy them. Right. Or not that you're, you're not worried about them being perfectly on the line. Yeah. Purposely don't, you know, purpose, purposefully don't put them on the line. Right. 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 Exactly. Make it a design decision. Right. Because remember right. that quote mistake can be a design choice if it's done right. twice or three times, four times, five times. <laughs> right. So, Yeah. And, and then, you know, the same thing is going to go for when you're doing custom quilting. So mm -hmm. one of the things when you start custom quilting that you'll find is you end up with a style that you feel very comfortable with that becomes your go-to if nobody is asking you for specific things, right? So mm -hmm. I tend to do things with swirls or feathers in some areas and then straight line work in others, right? Right. Um, because I like the juxtaposition of, of those two things together. Um, so like Angela Walters calls it dot to dot quilting. I actually mm -hmm. think of it as ruler work, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You're deciding like on a seam line, you're going to change your directions on a straight line, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's very, very effective. It's actually pretty quick to do um, once you get used to it. And you get to where you have a style that you feel very comfortable with and that you become known for, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that actually makes it easier for you to decide what you're going to do. Because when I walk up to a quilt, I know I'm going to have ruler work on it if I'm doing custom, custom work of some sort. And more than likely, it's going to have either feathers or swirls, right? Right. So which sounds, you know, like I'm copping out. But I've made a business out of this. Like, that's what I did mm -hmm. for the first nine years I was quilting. And I was turning people away because I couldn't, I didn't have enough time to custom quilt everybody's. So right. I was obviously doing it effectively, right? Um, but it was, it's a lot of work. Custom quilting to that level is a lot of work, right? Mm -hmm. um, I find myself doing the same thing now that I'm computer custom quilting, right? I've got... Um, if you were to look at my designs, a lot of blocks that have like feathers and swirls in them and a lot of block, blocks that look a lot like ruler work. Right. Right. So, yeah. What would you tell somebody who gets in that same rut? Because we can get into ruts because our eye gets drawn. To, I love purple and teal together. No kidding. That's why I made my my logo that, right? To get myself out of that rut, though, I actually, once I got comfortable and I figured out what um, which shop I like to buy my pantographs from, I signed up for their membership for a little bit. Yeah. Well, and you'll find that shops have personalities that, you know, unless they have a lot of designers work, working for them, if it's the same person doing all of the designs... Mm -hmm. They become very almost repetitive. One of my favorite shops that I love shopping for is One Song Needleworks, right? Mm -hmm. um, very high-end heirloom feathers and a lot of her designs. When you really start looking at her designs, a lot of them are very, very similar, right? Because it's it's all Donna doing them, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
if you go and you look at like intelligent quilting, or if you look at urban elements where you have a bunch of different designers designing for them, you get a lot of different designs, right? So I do try to buy my digital designs when I'm buying from different sources to make sure that I've, I'm not getting into that, you know, right. pigeonhole type thing. Susie's got a good question. You want to go ahead? Yes. Yeah. It says, do you find custom quilting can be as profitable as panners, panographs? Okay. So did I make a lot of money custom quilting? Yeah, I did. Did I work really hard for that money and really long hours? I did. So what I found was one of my besties here in North Carolina is a panograph quilter. And we made dollar for dollar every year about the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. She worked a fraction of the hours that I worked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you make money doing it? If, yeah, you can just know that you need to have a, your panograph business needs to be much bigger than your custom business does uh, for you to make, for it to be a profitable um, business, right? Um, mm -hmm. Only doing custom quilting. There's Sherry. There's the person, my my friend, who's a really good panograph quilter, just chimed in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so she she would tell you the same thing. We made pretty equal money. We were very honest with what the two of us were making. Mm -hmm. um, and I was putting in a lot of hours, like because quilts would take me a week, and she would be doing five mm -hmm. or six quilts in that time. Right. So I was bringing in the same amount of money but taking a lot more time to do it. So now I know that between 80 and 90% of my business needs to be panograph. And then if I had time, I would do 10 to 20% um, as custom. Unfortunately, I, I don't have time to do that right now. I'd like to get back to having time to do it though. Right. Well, and also too, within that panograph, I break that down. Let's break that down even farther. I have some of my panographs, those are the ones that stitch out quicker, my bread and butters. That are, you know, so you you break it down even farther. Yes, yes bread and butter. Bread and butter quilt. Terry, we're on the same, <laughs> same wavelength, friend. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I charge different for different pantographs. So depending on the customer, if they don't want to pay as much, they're going to pay less and do one of my bread and butter panos as opposed to doing, you know, like royal plume that takes forever because every time you go, you do one little feather plume, you gone back and forth three times right so right, right. um yeah well and here's the other thing too um it's educating your customers on what custom quilting really is yeah um people yeah. think i think people outside the quilting world for sure and newer quilters don't realize it is it realize how much time is actually in long arm quilting. I love when customers who I've been quilting for then decide to rent from us. <laughs> and then they're like, wow, I, I just didn't realize like a half hour, I'm in it a half an hour before I even get started. It's like, yeah, you're loading the quilt. There's, a, there's, there's, there's that time. So yeah. it's just, it's just educating our customers of, of why and, and the, the whys and the what's. And most of them are understandable. And so you can say, this is the reason why it's, we charge more. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you are getting into the custom quilting, the other thing I would tell you, Susie, is do not undervalue what you're doing. Right. Um, if you are not charging over four and a half cents a square inch, you are making less than minimum wage. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. In, a heart, in a heartbeat. I can go and work at McDonald's and not have near the amount of stress. Right, right. Right. I could be a greater greeter at Walmart. I can say hi to people, uh, right. you know, and not have this amount of stress by any means. Right. So right. definitely charge out at what you're worth. And if you're doing mm -hmm. custom quilting, even if you're new, you're worth a lot more than minimum wage. Yes. Even if you're new, you have mm -hmm. invested in your equipment. You have invested in the education. You have invested in yourself. So you are worth it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> That's one thing I never really had a problem for. I've always charged what I needed to for custom quilting. But I also had the local custom quilters that told me, you know, they were very honest up front. Don't come in here and undercut. It's not. You, you won't have any friends. And right. 
all of us ended up staying friends. Uh, you know, Sherry was part of that group too. Um, we were all in a group together, right? Um, mm-hmm. And we're all still friends. That's awesome. So we weren't trying to undercut each other, right? That's not right. the way to get customers. <laughs> it sounds really easy, but it's not the way to get customers. Well, and customers are good and smart and they'll understand. So because at well, some point, right? Yeah. The other thing is, is, you know, if you only have customers that want you to work cheaply, mm-hmm. right, that puts a lot more wear and tear on you and on your machine, right? You want customers who are willing to pay what you're worth. So one of my friends, Jen, told me, because we have this conversation about whether you, how you've priced your product. Um, excuse me for one second, please. I need to cough. So hold on. This is a second, please. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's, guys, I'm so sorry. Yes, we couldn't hear you cough. It's okay. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> good. I went with my grandchild to visit my other grandchildren. So the germ pool was new to me. <laughs> well, that yep. and you went to Texas and all the blue bonnets were in bloom. Oh, the for sure. They're beautiful. Fire flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we were just talking about orange and green right now in North Carolina. So yeah, it's got to be that way in Texas right now too. We just have barely little baby buds coming out. Oh, really? No, our tulips are gone. Tulips are gone. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The trees have bloomed and the, you know, dogwoods have bloomed and they're gone too for the most part. We're freezing tonight, so it's all good. Um, <laughs> Hence why I don't live in Omaha. <laughs> That's right. And welcome to the world. Right. So we were talking about, just to get back on and we'll stop squirreling. Yeah. We were talking about, do you remember? Quilting. quilting. I know quilting, but what part, what was that last? Oh, we we had, were... I had just given them their lecture that they are worth a lot. And they need to charge appropriately. And my friend Jen, thank you. My friend Jen (laughs) said the most beautiful thing that was so funny. Um, I'm L'Oreal and I'm worth it. Yeah. So we should all have that tattooed in our, on the inside of our eyelids. I'm L'Oreal and I'm worth it because we all are. Right. Yep. Every single one of us. What are some of the things when besides modern and traditional and things that you look at when you pick your panographs? Also looking for things that are novelty, right? So Mm -hmm. in your case, you might be looking for things that have tractors on them or things, maybe a cute (laughs) corn motif, right? Because that's more local to you uh, than Mm -hmm. it would be for me. Tractors would not for the most part, be a huge thing in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, things that might be uh, on both of ours, things that are like space themed or things that um, are technology themed, right? Because we're both high tech areas, right? Um, so yeah. So you want to look at things that are appropriate for the area you're in. So like in my area, acorns are huge. We're the city of or- Oaks, right? So um, we quilt a lot of things with acorns on them. I bet that's not a big thing in Omaha. Mm-mm. It's all good. Yeah. Sherry yeah. has a great comment. Most of us started out long arming because we are passionate about quilting. I think it's hard to think of it as a business instead of a hobby. I agree. I, I agree to a certain point, Sherry. So as somebody who has, um, started out as a very passionate quilter and I still consider myself a very passionate quilter as I consider you a very passionate quilter and in Angela um our experience is worth something and our time is worth a lot and uh it's okay to be the expert it's okay to be that passionate about my work that I want to share it with other people it's not that I'm not trying to do that I love that. Hence why we're spending tonight talking to you, everyone here about how to pick up pantographs. You are kind of worth it. It is, it is, is when you start thinking of it different than the hobby, um, that I'm sharing it with others that I want to continue this business to grow 
that's when I can get even more passionate. It's just been crazy thinking about that. I've only been in business as a brick and mortar for five years, right? Yeah. You've been a lot longer as a brick and mortar, <laughs> as a brick and mortar working with my son-in-law. I did have a couple of years in my basement as well, but yeah. um, as a brick and mortar with my, my, my son-in-law, but the more I get into this and the more, the less I treat it as a hobby and as a business, business, the more excited and the more I want to share with people. Yes, but you're also focused at, on it being a business. And I think when people first get their long arms, you ha you're going to have people who are very business focused mm -hmm. and can go right into this. I am starting a business and, and I'm going to be a business person and I'm going to be serious about this. But you're also going to have a group of people that are like taking their hobby and what they love mm -hmm. and kind of morphing it in between a business and a hobby. Like I'm going to be making money off of this, but I still want to love it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you can completely do that. Right. Um, but the, when it comes down to the business side of this, if you are running it as a business, you need to talk like it's a business too. Right. And I think that's right. what she's trying to say is to divide, you know, if you're going to run it as a business, don't treat it like a hobby, right? Or if you do treat it as a hobby, it's on your own time. And, and and to still keep that hobby alive, there's that thin line of running a business yeah, and then still trying to find time to quilt for yourself. Or, well, or, or finding things that bring you joy in quilting still that yes. don't have anything to do with your business. And you and I both try to find the time to do that. Your Tammy's morphing hers. She's mid morph. <laughs> She's <laughs> good. I'm still morphing, Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're always in a con. The nice thing I like to think about quilting is this quilting world is, um, gosh, it's so just amazing. It's just an amazing part to be a part of as a quilter, as a business owner, as a all of that. Don't you think so, Angela? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Oh, Tammy's going to see us in June. I bet Yay. She, and What's happening in Susie. June? It's June. I think Susie's going to see us in June too. Yes. Um, so June, the the second, third, and, and fourth, mm -hmm. Kathy and I and Tracy Russell and Angela Huffman will all be teaching at the APQS All-Star event in Franklin, Tennessee, which is outside of Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm bringing my sidekick, Jacob. Jacob is going to be down there. Yeah, he will be there as well. You may meet some of our other family members as well. Um, My new grandbaby. Grandbabies should be there. Yes, mm -hmm. um, grandbaby better be there by then. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, or Anna's an elephant. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, I like, like gestation. Anna. Yeah, gestational wise. I'm sorry. Gestational wise. <laughs> Let's put it this way: that baby's coming either way by that point. I don't think yeah, she's yeah. going to go that May, long. May tenth is the last day it gets to stay hibernating. Yeah, um, but yeah. So if you if you're interested in, um, it's going to be a really neat retreat that they're holding. Mm -hmm. um, they want to take care Once of you. Once in a so lifetime we're going thing. To have, be feeding you. We're, um, I know breakfast and lunch for sure. I think. Uh, there's order of stuff at night too. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be time that you can talk to all four of us when we're not in class in the evenings. Um, and you get to choose what classes you want. So It's yeah. going to be the first ever APQS all-star retreat. Yes, this is the first one. And I still, and I don't know about Kathy. I'm still pinching myself. I can't believe I get to be there. I can't believe it. Yeah. I'm so. almost to the freak out point. Almost to the freak out point. Yeah, I, I'm almost there. Cool. Tammy's because, you know, I want to just still do more projects. So, of course, driving back through Oklahoma, I thought, well, what if I made a buffalo on leather? That would be good. <laughs> she told me that. And I was like, let's make it 3D and six and full size. Six feet yeah. tall, big buffalo. So I'm going to do, I think, a buffalo. I got to figure, I'm not going to do it before next week, but I'm going to come back and get some leather and I'm going to dye and outline a buffalo and put the muscles in there and all the good stuff and put some, uh, yeah, a seven hour drive. You'll be fine, Tammy. You're going to be good. You're going to do an awesome. It's not too bad. Break it up a little bit. You'll be good. Seven hours yeah. is like three pit stops. It's not that long. Yeah. That's about how long it'll take me to get there too. Yeah. Well, we're going to have baby in tow, so we will see. 
it's going to take you longer. <laughs> Maybe a dough. And we're going to have some machines with us too. So I'm excited. We're actually helping deliver the machines as well. So yeah. it's going to be fabulous. Um, the topics that you guys need to sign up, but I think some of the classes are full. Some of them are filling up super fast and are if not full. Yeah. But you and I have demo classes that people. The demo classes electric. tend to have more people in. We can have more people in the classes than the hands-on classes can. So if you're looking at hands-on classes, you definitely want to sign up. Um, I know that there are some available still on the second day for sure, because mm -hmm. Angela's day. Um, mm -hmm. panel one is still open mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so there are still some hands-on classes available, guys. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for that, um, definitely get up there and sign up for sure. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Um, That's going to be so – I cannot – I've never been there, so I'm excited. Um, my classes – <laughs> yeah. My classes are a little bit different. Your classes are a little bit different. Yours are very, yours is very niche. What are you uh, going to be doing? I'm telepath. Um, I tried to get, you know, we were all saying what we were going to do. And I started, you know, saying I wanted to do things that weren't quilt path. And they all looked at me like, go back to quilt path. I, it's not that I can't teach other things. I can. Um, not everybody who's going can teach quilt path. So they were like, we need you to go back to quilt path. <laughs> so all, right. all of mine are quilt path. But yeah. I've got um, yeah. classes on pattern CAD, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing power panto. There's, I have different, uh, four different classes on quilt path. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, classes. I have some wild, wild classes too, besides hands-on. I mean, I don't have the hands-on classes, but so um, I love that machine. Anything almost but edge to edge quilting. <laughs> So I like to take that machine and see what it can do, yeah. right? So you can piece on that machine. I might talk about crumb quilting and bag making. I'm going to talk about working with leather and how you can make artwork out of it. Because this this long arm, hmm, APQS, nothing but the best. So I'm really kind of excited about making it and show and doing some fun things. And then we're going to talk about good old tension. <laughs> when and how, and to how to your fix tension our tension out of it <laughs> yes yes and how to take your tension out of tension right that's a good one yeah. that's a good one angela that's awesome yeah so and yeah probably, it's gonna be great and you know what it's gonna be a great discussion we can talk about how do you pick pantographs you could ask that question tammy uh, and, um, Susie, and you would need coming to come too. up with some fabulous, fabulous questions because you get to ask us. Yeah. Panel discussion. I challenge you guys to come up with a good one for Jake since he's not here <laughs> and he's not listening. <laughs> yeah, he's not listening tonight. So yeah, if you want to help us out, come up with something really technical to ask Jake, put him on the spot. Yeah. He'll be great. He'll be awesome. <laughs> He's going to, he'll get us. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll know, he know I, I put everybody up to it. So when we get, I love that quilt behind you, Tammy, by the way. I absolutely, I've said that before. I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. That is just fabulous. So love it. It's a beautiful red and white quilt. quilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on other things too, as a new quilter, whether you're a renter, domestic, or a uh, long arm or free motion quilting, um, getting started, would you say try to perfect a, like you did swirls for a while before you moved on to feathers? Let's talk about that. Yeah. So I would, I would say start with something uh, that feels natural to you. So for me, it is swirls. Um, I am not a meandering was not natural for me at all. I had to, I have to really concentrate when I do it, number one. Um, and I tend to want to throw other things in it when I'm doing it. So doing an all over stipple on a quilt is painful for me. I don't enjoy that at all. But if you tell me I can do swirls on your quilt, you are my best buddy. I will swirl <laughs> in and out all over that quilt all day long and not think twice about it. Right. right. So mm -hmm. to me, that was a very natural movement. So you want to find your natural movement throw some practice cloth on and just let yourself quilt. 
-hmm. and think of, you know, uh, try to do a meander, feel, see how that feels for you. Try to see if doing a meander with loops feels more natural for you. As soon as I throw loops, stars, flowers, anything into that meander, I feel a lot better. Right. right. Um, and can, and then I crazy can thought it. though, isn't it? It's a crazy yeah. thought. Yeah. And teaching yourself how to do the path of a meander, even if it's not a natural mo motion for you, lets you do a lot of other quilting. It, it lets you help. Um, it helps you learn how to move across your quilt and fill the entire space of your quiltable space up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and, and there's a trick to that. And then, you know, how to keep the bottom edge of what you're quilting soft so that when you go to quilt and match up the next row, you don't see there's a row straight across. Right. Right. So you kind of want to leave it undulating and soft at the bottom so you can, you know, take a loop and throw it up into the line above it and then come back down and make it all look like it meshes together. Right. Yeah. What, what you don't where it doesn't start, where it doesn't end. You don't know. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they're teaching you how to start free motion quilting, will start off with an all over um, stipple or meander as, you know, your basic track and then start throwing in loops, uh, double loops. Like when you squirrel twice around a loop, you know, go around it and go around it again. Um, doing flowers, which is just a loop with, you know, little bumps around it, right, to start out with, um, and then, you know, throwing stars in them. And that gets you up through a lot of quilts. Okay. I would say start with your A, B, Cs, because yeah. you already know how to cursive write. And right. what you need to do is to get the feel of your beautiful machine, whether you're yep. pushing your fabric through or you're working on your machine, your A, B, Cs, you already have up here. Yeah. Do that same cursive line straight across. That's what right. I would say. And then you can move it from there and make them kind of calligraphy ABCs. <laughs> you can do an entire border just using an A, just coming up, looping around and doing the next A and looping around. Yes. Right. They look awesome. So I actually somewhere in have a purse where I was doing rows. Um, I had black fabric on my, my long arm and I was, uh, had just broken it up into like sashing strips mm -hmm. and I had pulled these big, long sashing strips trying to teach myself different designs. I made it into a purse because I used variegated thread mm -hmm. and it's still one of my favorite purses. Yummy. Yeah. It was easy. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, ABCs are great. And if you know how to cursive write, you, you are ahead of the game. There Think about go. this one, the people who are in their twenties and are starting into long arm quilting. They don't know cursive. Three Threes and E's is another one that's great, <laughs> Sherry. L's yeah. and E's. L's and E's. Fabulous. So you're talking this way, L's and E's? Yep. You can also do a three, and then you reverse back and do, like, you do this way, and then go like this, and you have another design. Yep. So capital, capital E's and the number three will also give you a different design. And then she's talking L's and E's, big L, right? <laughs> what, H does have its right. benefits, sweetheart. Yes. <laughs> Who knew? We have a right? we have our own secret code. I'm just telling they, you. <laughs> they, they may know how to handle the digital world, but if it all crashes and we have to read an old do uh, document, we're here to save the day. <laughs> that's what it's all about yes right? it is all right does anybody have any questions that we can help ask you guys answer for you guys because let's get in some of you guys involved here what would you guys like to hear any questions any thoughts i love that you guys are asking some questions that's awesome i love that they're interacting with us they're absolutely comfortable with us <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah Age has its benefits. Age always has its benefits. Yeah. And we're, while, while we're waiting for people to type in questions, keep thinking of questions and typing them in. Um, I also want to ask if you guys could do us a favor and go up to YouTube. And if you have not already subscribed to the Quilting Academy on YouTube, if you could do that for us, it would be a big help. Um, we are really close to getting to a milestone number on YouTube. 
Um, and it would be a big help if you could subscribe and get your friends to subscribe too. All right. We're not looking for that many people. Trust me. We just oh, need to look at this. Denise has a great thing. Me enter me meandering and throwing in a flower or something. Yeah. So, Denise, you know what this is, is, um, okay, this is not rocket science. <laughs> and you're looking at two people married to rocket scientists. Um, okay, so this is just letting your brain kind of go. Yes, and so you throwing in those little things. Yes, sometimes that helps break up and the stiffness and the angst you get in your shoulders. Okay, Susie, I have a question. Do you like your feathers when you're drawing them? Because she said, any tips for practicing feathers? When you're drawing on them on your, like on a sheet of paper, do you like them better than when you're quilting them? Oh, there's a good question. What's your reasoning before? Yes, yeah, she okay. loves them better let drawing. Me, let me explain why. Because you're practicing on a piece of paper and you're not practicing on cloth. Okay. So you already know the mechanics of drawing your feathers because you've liked them on paper. So what you need to do is get some practice cloth on you on and give yourself the okay for things to not look good at, to begin with. If you practice for a half an hour, they'll look better at the end of the half an hour than the beginning. And then I'm going to give you a challenge that somebody gave me at one point. If most of the time they're okay and every once in a while you're just not happy with a, like one section of it, Right. I want you to throw a quilt on that you're not married to, maybe a donation quilt, and feather the whole thing. Just okay. do all of her feathers all over it. And then take it off and look at it. And I think you'll there be you surprised go. at how good you actually are. I would say one hint about going on feathers is how, is how you bring it back to the spine. I think that's yeah, where everybody has an issue. Oh, yeah. So the other thing, what Sherry's saying is draw a circle and understand if you draw from, if you draw your circles right-handed or left-handed, meaning do you circle clockwise or counterclockwise, right? Because you may also be drawing, trying to draw your feathers the opposite direction. So if you don't think about it, you just draw a circle, do you do it this way or this way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Whichever way you draw a circle naturally your feathers need to face that direction, right? So um, you're going to go up and draw. I draw my feather slanted this direction as a, at least starting out with instead of the opposite direction because I draw my circles clockwise. And I also had a teacher once tell me that it is, it is easier if you do it counterclockwise than clockwise. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, yeah, she also looked at mine and told me that we needed to talk after class because my feathers were just fine. That it was me, okay. not my feathers. There you go, oh, Tammy. Oh, wax, wax on, wax off. off. <laughs> <laughs> and again, age mm -hmm. comes into hand handy here. <laughs> I mean, practice things like a feather brief. You've got to go in every direction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah, and you do need to kind of lay those feathers down on the spine. They can't be standing straight up. They've got to kind of slope onto the spine that spot otherwise they look like fingers yeah <laughs> going okay. back on your hand right or potato chips you said yeah sometimes they're really big and wide and they look like potato chips <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> so you kind of want to stretch them out a little bit okay i have a german shepherd on my lap excuse me for just a second off oh. right so see look at this we're all good this is all live <laughs> um so a time what about a tip on practice cloth Sausage. Sausages. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tell people to save money on practice cloths that you throw, you got your backing on, put your batting mm -hmm. on, and you got your top on. Well, you mm -hmm. finish that whole top, that hole, it's all filled in, right? Mm -hmm. What you can do is just throw another top on and go at it. And I say just change your thread a couple times. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's true too. Go over, like if you're using white fabric, do it with white, do it with pink, do it with blue. So you can see the differences on it, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you can't tell where you're going because there's too much thread, then put a piece of fabric on top right. of it and keep going. And there then you go. when you've got those kind of stiff quilts that you've made, mm -hmm. cut them up and give them to your vet or the local, you know, I give them to the ASPCA. There you go. 
So yeah, and they can just cut them and put them into the kennels. They don't even have to fix the edges at that point because to be quite honest, they're not even going to wash them. Right. They're going to just use them once and throw them away. Okay. So. All to... right. So yeah, they're going to, the dogs are about to go outside so that they stop trying to sit in my lap. Oh, so you're, you're, doing... <laughs> yeah. you're doing, you're fine, hun. You're doing just fine. She shut the door. Um. So the thing also, when you're doing that, that feather, the practice, Susie, make sure you go back, back on that spine. Like think about when you exit the freeway, mm -hmm. how it curls around. That helps mm -hmm. me. I have little sayings in my quilty brain that are dumb and stupid, but they help me quilt and they help me say things. So I'm getting off the freeway, Whoop, going back on the freeway, getting off the freeway, going back on the freeway. When my, I'm doing my binding, here's the funniest ones. When you're piecing your binding, <laughs> you want your, I'm trying to see if I can do this with two fingers. Let me see. I'm going to just draw it real quick because that's what I'm going to just do. When I'm piecing my binding, I have a really funny saying in my brain that truly helps me. Here's my binding. I'm going to sew the strips together, right? How and do I know which way I'm going to do that seam? I'm going to draw across the waistline, never up the crotch. Like it looks like a pair of pants. Okay. <laughs> I hope I just made everybody laugh because you know, it looks like a pair of pants, right? All right. Oh. Yeah. Plumes are different sizes. No issue with, okay. Well, that's just going to get control. Slow down a little bit, mm -hmm. Susie. Slow down. This is not a race to see how fast you can quilt that feather. And just, okay? you might also want to put something down on your quilt surface that is about the size that you want it to be. Like, let's say you want the tops of your feathers to be the size of a nickel or the size of a quarter. Set one on the surface of your quilt so you have a visual. Yeah. All right. Tina. You're never going to look at binding the same again. I promise you. <laughs> yes, I say it all every single time I cross the waistband. Cross That's the waistband. I have to do binding when I'm doing that, especially that last joint. Mm -hmm. I have to do it the same way every single time or I mess it up every single time. Right. <laughs> so I have these this weird sayings about all of my... All of my quilting, whether I'm bearing threads or I'm making binding, when I'm piecing, it's all good. I also have one if you are free motion quilting and you are not using your stitch regulator, mm. find a song that lets you work at the tempo that, that feels right to you. Mm -hmm. It's like one of my friends sings Winnie the Pooh constantly the whole time she's free motion quilting to keep her stitches regulated the whole time. That's not the one I would pick. Fabulous idea. <laughs> it would drive me nuts after a while. But I tend to put music on when I'm pre-motion quilting for the same reason, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. some people listen to podcasts. Some people listen to book on tapes mm -hmm. because it makes this shut up why this goes, yeah. right? We need, we need to calm the gray matter down to thinking too much when we start thinking too much. So maybe Susie, that's an exercise that you need to do is you need to practice them with some music on or with a, a TV show or something where you get this to calm down and you're not thinking about what you're doing. Cause sometimes those are the better ones or actually try to, yeah, I, I try to look back to see, I'm like, oh, I wasn't thinking there. I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And then the last one is, I mean, set it six feet away from you when you're judging it, guys. Don't yes. judge it in the frame because you're going to pick everything out if you do. There's magic pixie dust Yeah. when it goes it, from here to here. Here, right? Yes, so pixie dust. Set it away from you. Hang it on the wall and step way back. Yeah, that's right. And then pretend like it's not your quilting. If it was someone yeah. else's quilting, would you think it was okay? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, everybody looks at the whole and we look at the part, whether it be my, my, your piecing, your long arming, your binding. So it's all good. 
Are they back? You can hear the elephants running into the room, can't no, you? No, I just know your facial expression. They're back. <laughs> Her dogs yeah. are back. So the beautiful the dogs. one has decided that uh, my mom and dad flew in today and my nephew. So Neil, Neil is over here trying to keep them entertained. It's mostly just Ada. Um, the younger one, but Ada keeps running up, checking on gra grandma and grandpa, and then running back down and looking at me like there's strangers up here, mom. What are you doing? <laughs> Let's go back upstairs, right? This is her, she's a German yeah, shepherd for sure. Hearing it on the microphone. Yeah, I don't know that you guys are hearing it because I feel like the reason I'm reacting is it, I think it sounds like an elephant running in and out of my room. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Brenda, Tracy is no longer part of Quirky Quilter. She has worked on some other ventures and she is. Yeah moving forward with some other exciting things and we're very 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 happy for her yeah. so super excited for her she's got some great ventures going so she's plugging away and still quilting as crazy as she can she is still being as awesome as usual yep so all right um blue bloods judy mm, listens to blue bloods <laughs> that's crazy that's awesome no i love Mine it to be ncis i can listen to it you know, start at the beginning and listen to the whole series. I can also do Harry Potter books that books on tape the same way. You're welcome, Brenda. We're happy for what yeah. Tracy's doing on her adventures. It's really a lot of fun watching her. So I'm sure if you catch up with her, it'll be all good. It's all, we're seeing all of her excitement. So as with all of us, speaking of social yeah. media, Angela, what do you think? We all put our great stuff out on social media. So where can you we find do. us, Angela? So obviously you can find us on the Quilting Academy, which mm -hmm. is a mighty network. Um, and it's what this live is part of is the Quilting Academy. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find us on YouTube as Threadwaggle or Fabric Bash, right? Our company names. We're also mm -hmm. on Facebook, still as Threadwaggle and Fabric Bash because that's who we are. Um, I do Instagram. I think you do too as Kathy. Oh, yeah. Kathy. Mm -hmm. Um, so we all do multiple different social media venues um, with our company names. Uh, there will be the Quilting Academy will soon have a page on Facebook as well. Um, there's a page there, but we're not we haven't published anything to it. Um, and it's more going to be trying to, di to direct people to the Mighty Network. Um, I don't see us ever actually doing a lot of social media uh, posting up there as far as questions and answers. Um, the whole idea behind that was to get it off of Facebook. So um, but we do have that Facebook page already set up. We just haven't made it live yet. So for those who are new to the Mighty Network, how do you get there? Because it's so a new we'll, word. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you look at the link, um, there's a link in the description below uh, that you can use to sign up for the Mighty Network. If it's not there right when we um, go, it won't, the link won't be there until this goes live or isn't live anymore until after it's recorded. Right. Mm -hmm. Um and then there'll be a link down in the description of the video for you to click on to, to join. Fabulous. And I'll make sure that it's there. Right. <laughs> yep. Is. We sure will. Yeah. But I if you could, the things that you can help us out that are free is to thumbs up and yep. follow the social medias that we are on. Those are free and sharing. If you mm -hmm. just share and say, Hey, you know, I heard a great tip from Angela on how to practice for feathers, or I heard a great tip on Kathy, how to put binding, mm -hmm. you know, my kind of a fun thing. So to share that kind of fun stuff, because that is free, but yeah. it means a lot to us. And it actually tickles us to all kinds of fancy feathers on when we see things that are shared. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you hear that on any YouTube video, or any Facebook video that you're doing, like, comment, and share. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that any content creator is saying that is because it helps us with the algorithms for those websites, meaning mm -hmm. that um, we're presented to more people that way, right? Which then helps us build our audience. Um, and that's all stuff that those, you know, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram care about, right? Yep. Um, is if we're creating content that we're creating content that people want to know about. All right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Miss Angela, I'm glad your mom and dad are there and Neil. And it's been I about do. an hour. It has. No. And it's been wonderful. <laughs> it's spend over. I know it just started. And it's been wonderful spending it with all of you. So thank you for letting us gab at you. You guys are fabulous for listening to us. We appreciate you very much. Um, I'm going to be, huh? 
Oh, I was going to say, and next month, because we know what our topic is for next month already, we are going to be talking a little more about maintenance, not just long arm maintenance. Well, we all do domestic, or Kathy and I both do domestic machines too. So we're going to be talking about maintaining sewing machines, Mm -hmm. domestic sewing machines, long arm sewing machines. And we're hoping Jake's going to feel like he can be with us that day. We'll see how it is. Probably not, because baby will be just born. So would it be better to do that in June then? Probably. Okay. So we might want Jake to be there for that one since he's yeah. you know, the main tech. So um, I'm just saying it's too close to, to baby's be. birth that it's going to be in family. It's going to be in town. So, oh, thank you, Brenda. You're wonderful. Oh, You're so sweet. Um, I'm going to be at Paducah next week. If you all are at Paducah, stop in the APQS booth. Make sure you give me a hug. Tell me that you watch us on Quirky Quilters. I would love that. Um, tell your friends that we're going to be down there. I'm going to be at APQS. Um, Angela has her family there. This is why she probably will not be there. But um, I'm going to be there for the very first time going it's your to put Paducah- first time. She Anybody has no any idea what she's getting in for? <laughs> I know. Give me some hands. I'm also part of a scavenger hunt between eight of us shops and it's going to be fabulous and it's going to be I'm going to have a piece to a puzzle and when you get all the puzzle pieces together it's going to be something wonderful so stop in and make sure you get the puzzle piece from APQS booth 1619 and 1617 look at that I knew the booth number yep the other thing I wanted to say is that um on the Mighty Networks, I started something that I called Thursdays with Thread Weggle because I'm not very creative with naming things. Um, so there are posts going up every Thursday. Um, so we're, I'm trying to make sure that we are a little bit more active on the Mighty Network. Um, and then I also have a new YouTube series starting in May, which is going to be on Quilt Pack. Um, and then I have content dropping uh, weekly about Elna's on my page right now so and then kathy just has lots of content because she's better at this as far as um funny shorts and stuff like that she does she does really funny stuff if you're not if you have not liked her on facebook you really should they're Um, really good if you go to instagram too so yeah instagram that's true she does a lot of them on instagram too well they're all everywhere but no i get some help these days Hmm? Wear comfortable shoes. Exactly. Sure, wear comfortable shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel everything needs to be comfortable. I got to be comfortable shoes, comfortable, comfortable clothes. It's going to be great. I'm excited. Definitely. Thank you, Sherry, for that. That's fabulous. I love it. <laughs> All right, dear. The quilt behind you is beautiful, as usual. Thank I you. Love it, it is my mom's. Believe I it or not. It's a it's- uh, Gravity by Jaybird. It was a block of the month, but this one happens to be my mom's. That's, I love that pattern. I just love that pattern. Me too. It's a happy quilt. All right. All right, everybody. Keep on quilting. Keep on asking the questions and keep us, uh, keep us going because you guys keep us going every day. Yes, ma'am. Bye, dear. Bye. Have a good day.